Now that the probe's attached and the system is ready to go, we're ready to insert the probe into the patient. Let me point out a couple of things before we do that. You can see here on the handle our lever, and we can move that toward the end of the uh, handle or toward the probe, which is retroflex. You see the probe move here in a retroflex fashion. Or if we move the lever away from the probe or toward the end of the handle, in this way, that's antiflex, and you can see the probe move in a different direction. So let's do that again. Retroflex, antiflex. Now you see how much variability there is in the probe. I, can, I have great degree, <coughs> excuse me, great degree of, of, of being able to move that probe. But in actual patient setting, once it's in the esophagus and in the stomach, I really only need small movements like this. A small movement can make a big difference when I'm trying to look at the leaflets or I'm trying to look at the ventricle. So we really don't need all of this movement, but we have the ability to do that if we, if we need to. Another thing to notice about the probe, you can see the, the very tip of the probe here, the shiny segment of the distal end of the probe. This is actually the, 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 the ultrasound transducer. And that's the way we want to insert the probe. We do not want to insert the shiny part of the transducer pointing up toward the head because that'll just make us have to flip that or rotate that 180 degrees once we're in the esophagus. So we want to start with the, the transducer pointing down toward the tongue and that will be lined up appropriately with our handle. You can see that this probe is very flexible on the end and can be very easy to insert but it can also curl a little bit in the mouth, so insertion movements that are small, just like you would insert an NG tube, are more helpful as opposed to taking the, the probe back here and just pushing it into the mouth in one big large motion. We do need to use some lubrication, and I usually lubricate, uh, oh, about the first uh, 20 centimeters. This is about the 20 centimeter mark here, 20 centimeter mark or so, just to help us get it through the, uh, the oral pharynx. Usually these patients will have an NG tube uh, and an endotracheal tube. From this standpoint, we really, just like you would an OG tube, try to insert the probe. We want to get it in the midline of the tongue or the mouth, the oral pharynx, and, and try to line it up with the esophagus and then advance uh, gently. I'm going to gently uh, feel the patient's tongue here to help me get a line. And then just slide the probe over the top of the tongue until I get it into the back of the oral pharynx. Once I get it there, this patient's not paralyzed, so I can feel him try to swallow. And I sort of gently wait until I feel him swallow. And then try to gently advance that on into the esophagus. And there you go, you can feel it give, and now we're ready to start our exam.